come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Every, Q Thunder, Q Thunder. <laughs> every Saturday night, whether you like it or not, the Saturday Night Freak Show is coming your way on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and this week, Google Play. That's right. Oh, my God. So welcome, all I'm you sure Google free. Play listeners. <laughs> it's still free. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so give us a like, hit subscribe, subscribe or, you know, anything. Funny anything face emoji. Send us money. You know, I mean, it's all, it's all good. Uh, <laughs> so what we He's not going to tell us about it. <laughs> <laughs> 25 no, no, Nothing yet. Nothing yet. Still waiting. <laughs> so what uh, we do here is we watch movies every Saturday. Then we gather around a bar. We drink a lot of beer. At least I do. And then we talk about it for your edification and listening pleasure. I'm surrounded by the internet radio superstars, including Toby. Holly. Travis. And I'm Colin. And this week we watched the movie chosen by Travis. And it was called <laughs> House. And it's from the year 1986 or 5. Six. 86. And it was directed by It was Steve Miner, the guy that directed Friday 13th Part 2. Steve Miner directed Warlock, motherfucker. One Holy of the classic shit. movies that has been on this show. You should go check I out know our past your episode. Name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was uh produced by Sean S. Cunningham of Friday 13th. Part one fame, the guy that created the franchise that uh, that uh, rocked off the 80s. Yeah. Well, that's what we were saying. This is, uh, wait, how many Sean Cunningham movies can you name? Uh, Friday 13th and House. <laughs> Deep Star 6. Same. Really? Same group of people. Harry Manfredini did the music. I don't know who wrote it. But yeah, Deep Star 6. Hmm. Nobody that's knows what sick. I'm talking about. No, that's the, not at all. like, Dan O'Bannon. Nope. No, that's deep. In the year 1989, suddenly Hollywood developed this obsession with we want to do underwater uh, monster movies. There was Leviathan, Deep Star Six, and The Abyss. Abyss. All came out. Oh, I love The Abyss. Yeah, me too. The Deep was a Peter Benchley. uh, Wrote Jaws. Oh, is that the uh, octopus squid? Is that no? That's the Beast. Whatever. That's the beach. Doesn't matter. <laughs> there's a lot of them down there. Be scared of the beach. Yeah. There's also a movie Sean Cunningham did called uh, Spring Break. Yeah, Anyone he, well, he back in the day like, when it was all like, you well, know, Sean, beach movies. Sean Cunningham. In the 80s. And, and nudity. They actually used to do like family movies before they're like, hey, this thing called Halloween happened. Let's just, you know, let's just kind of rip on that and make some money or whatever. Then boom, you know, yeah. success. But it's and funny that he these didn't... people, once they have success in horror, it's hard for them to get out, you know, because they're like, you get called the master of horror after once or two, you know, one or two, <laughs> yeah. especially Friday the 13th. It is one of the best horror movies ever goddamn made. So, you know, even though you're like, yeah, it's Halloween with the end of Carrie tacked on. <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> That's how you make a movie. You watch two other movies that are great. And you have, <laughs> Splice them you together. You make that movie. <laughs> yeah. That's what this this is what house is. Like I, I hope you that's what we just watched. Yeah, I hope you didn't watch the Japanese movie from the sixties called House. That's also a really good uh a really good right. uh horror movie. Yeah, also okay. this uh movie apparently not at all based off of the T V show House. No, no, no there's nothing yeah, to no. No, I mean I had never seen it before, but you know, I didn't really expect it to. No. <laughs> it was like Hugh Laurie it was Hugh just Laurie pop out of a closet at some point. I mean point. I was waiting, but we're like yeah. an hour and a half in. I'm like, where is Hugh Laurie? <laughs> it's not showing up. So right, but you a- know who does show up in this? The fucking greatest American hero. You don't know who I'm talking about, do you? Yeah, Carrie's boyfriend. William Cat. No great Amer- greatest American hero? Yeah. He He's- finds a suit that's delivered by aliens. He puts it on. What's the Wait, theme song? Him? Can you sing it? That's the Believe It or Not, I'm Walking oh, on Air. Oh, yeah. Never Believe It or Not, day. George is at home. home. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, I forgot about that. That's a good looking Where guy, Where could he be? <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. That's the theme song. I think that was actually my voicemail, like, outgoing message. I think that was wow. everyone's just recorded. And nobody <laughs> knows what the show is it's that hilarious. it comes from. Yeah. Amazing. But I've always liked the guy as the boy from, from Carrie, he was because he always wonders like, is this a trick on Carrie? Does he really like her? You know, is he really trying to give her a chance? And like, you know, because his girlfriend's just like, ask Carrie White out, or yeah. you know, <laughs> okay, okay. He seemed like a decent fellow. He didn't deserve what happened. And this could have been Luke Skywalker. 
Because they casted uh, Carrie and, uh, Star and Star Wars at the same time. So William Cat could have been Luke Skywalker. True well, story. Imagine that dimension. Mm. Yeah, right? he was in the running. They were sharing the same casting office, casting both those movies up at the same time. He would have been too confident. You needed, like, Mark Hamill's, <laughs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> yeah. So it's like an alternate universe. Star yeah. Wars, he's probably Luke Skywalker. So House is kind of like if you took Poltergeist, Evil Dead, and Nightmare on Elm Street and rolled it into one movie. It really tries to capture the feeling of all three of these movies. Well, it's a it's a monster movie, which I guess you know you go into it. You have, a movie's called House. You figure with it, well, you're going to be ballsy enough to call your mo- movie House. This has got to be the ultimate haunted house movie, and that's not really what it's you not get. What it is no. like uh, at all? Is. <laughs> I beg nope. the differ. Nope. <laughs> because in the ultimate, well, I mean, like scary ghosts and all this stuff, and you're thinking like you know the haunting, the Amityville yeah, horror, yeah. the Changeling, yeah. You know? The Shining. This House doesn't feel Hill. like any well, of because those. Ghostbusters and Poltergeist have come out. Yeah. And so that means you're going to have fun at the movies, mm-hmm. right? And Nightmare on Elm Street, you know? Well, that gave us Horror the idea to, were not... to open the doors and play with, like, dimensions and, you know... And that's why I've always... This is why this movie stands out to me as a go- uh, than other ghost movies. Because most ghost movies are the... You hear, this is the creepy tale of the ghost. And then for the first 45 minutes, people are like, Hello? Hello? You know, <laughs> yeah. where's Susan? But this actually gives you kind of the character's perspective on, like, what a kind of a dimension-altering ghost can do. Almost like Oculus that came out recently, how it it gave you a cool, different perception of, like, a ghost could be like, do you want your apple? (laughs) It's a flower, like a light bulb, bulb. you know, (laughs) ghost, you know, zinger. Like the movie 1408 maybe did something along these lines where the ghost actually plays with your, or it's even a ghost. It's a haunting of some type. We're not even sure in this movie if it's a spirit or what, a force, let's call it. A force, yeah. That can alter your perception so you hallucinate, but you're not sure if your hallucination is you're going crazy or there's actually some yeah. type of supernatural occurrence happening within the domicile. Yeah, and I like how this movie starts off with like a boy delivering groceries to, to, to uh, you assume an old lady, right? Because it's a nice, beautiful house. And, you know, he's just like, you know, no able-bodied person has somebody delivering uh, <laughs> I totally speak would. for yourself. I totally would. <laughs> I hate around. going to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. I'd like this, 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 and this. There are services that do it. You can do it. You can order it online. I don't awesome. think it's like, I'll put it on your Here. tab. We don't do that shit anymore. It's like, we take credit over the phone. Call. But, uh, so the guy finds the old lady uh, hanging. You know, so right there, you're like, holy shit, you know, this house is so horrible. There's something in this house that's it so horrible. It makes old ladies kill makes themselves. makes old ladies kill themselves. Were Not you? like even by pill. They they have a thing full of pills. They could do it easily. She's like, no, I need this right now. I can't even wait the few minutes it takes for a pill to go through my system. Right. Well, I got a question then, because Travis and I have seen this movie before. We have two mm-hmm. newbies to the movie tonight. So yes. at this point in the movie, yes. were you thinking the setup for this movie is going to be that this old lady is the ghost that's haunting the house? At first... That was my initial impression. Okay. Yes. I kind of thought that at first, but then I figured that was probably a red herring. All right. Just mm-hmm. curious. I'm curious. Like, because, you know, you've seen the movie so many times. You're watching it going like, uh, this happens and this happens. But I'm like, if you were first time going through this in 1986 or, you know, whenever you're first seeing the movie, like, is that the impression that the audio, that the filmmakers are trying to give you? Mm-hmm. I think so. Okay. I, th- I don't know. I always recall just right from the get go, remember like, oh, you know, there's something horrible because I mean, then it get uh, it, it gets uh, passed down to William Cat, who is a author, a horror author. Yeah, of, Roger uh, Cobb. Roger Cobb. And they talk about how like name. you hear how yeah, Roger Cobb for horror. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> but he's trying to work on his like mm, my my Vietnam like book that will depress I love everybody. That none of his fans. There's an early scene where he has to go to like a book signing or something and. All of these like drooling fans are coming up to him, and one of the guys asks him, you know, like, "What you what are you working on next?" He's like, "My Vietnam book," and they're like, "Oh, that that's really great." So he goes, <laughs> yeah, the guy wanders off. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, this is the year of platoon. Damn it, nineteen eighty six. <laughs> this is when the the Vietnam thing was still happening in movies. Full Metal Jacket was the following year, right? <laughs> I don't know. Shit, there were still casualties of war in the future. That was eighty nine. So yeah, Rambo three. 
Yeah. <laughs> that's still coming. That was Afghanistan. Yeah, that, was, that movie Fort told Rambo the future. Two. I'm sorry, Rambo Two. Yeah, you know, it was the year before. Be cold. Well, I think that also plays into as we're going to get into it. I think Rambo was also a heavy influence on this oh, movie. You think? But maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So Roger Cobb is an author. He's distraught because uh, he has lost his both his marriage and his kid uh, pre- prior to the beginning of this movie, right? So his son has yeah. disappeared in a scene. We see him at the house. He remembers uh, a lot of things in this movie. Well, yeah. at, f- at first, all we know is that he's missing because he makes a call to his friend at the FBI. Yeah. And so we know that there's a case that this kid's missing. At first, that's all we know. Yeah. Does the FBI get involved in, like, child that's, abduction? That's well, what but I was I, thinking. I thought it was across no, state <laughs> lines. Yeah, but he's I'm like, thinking... yeah, stop calling so-and-so at the CIA. <laughs> well, because I'm thinking he's an author that has contacts with these. So he's kind of uh, calling in. Favors right. with friends, yeah. and that's what, like, hey, dude, leave the guy alone. You know, yeah. like, yeah. it wasn't like a threat to, like, leave the CIA guy alone. You know, it's just like, hey, buddy, you know, like, he told me, he called me and said you were bugging him. You know, the CIA yeah. has things to do. Yeah, so he's just leave calling in alone. favors that he's done research from his books. That's what I gather from that scene. Yeah, well, you could be right. That would fit. Yeah. yeah. So it he seemed, moved. It seemed like the FBI guy was trying to blow him off, though, because the secretary was like, oh, well, he's on the other line. He's like, I'll wait. And then the guy came right on the line. Yeah. Because like, I do no, feel nothing. like it's one of those, like, I mean, uh, the movie doesn't explain it right away, but I mean, the mysterious circumstances of which the kid disappears, where the kid's just in a pool. The guy he says he dives in. Well, we see him dive in, and the kid's just gone from the pool, right? And everybody's like, where's the kid, dude? He's like, huh, he's in the. Well, <laughs> I guess the way that uh, that I originally read that was, uh, well, I don't know. Did I read it this way? You know it's a haunted house movie, so I guess I didn't see it, you know, the way that the movie's trying to set it up. But the kid's playing in the backyard, and then he's gone, and Roger mm-hmm. runs out front, and there's a car that peels off, and yeah. there's squealing tires. And then he's like, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy, where you at? So the impression I think you're originally supposed to get is maybe the kid was abducted right there, yeah. right? right? And then when he runs into the backyard, he sees the kid in the pool, jumps in, and the kid's not there. And so this, I think, is supposed to establish, like, is Roger cracking under stress right mm-hmm. away? Like, this is the beginning of the but, stress but fracture. But he shouldn't even yeah. be stressed at that point, movie. though, right? So why would he crack under stress there? He because. was He had his wife. He had his kid. He was just like... Well, because his so kid's like he's under, took his kid. yeah, his kid's gone and he's flipping out. Well, and because he's a Vietnam veteran, so the stress PTSD, PTSD. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I don't buy it. I'm not sure. <laughs> no, but I like that idea. Except, <laughs> aren't you a vet? <laughs> yeah, I can say that. I can say that. They just don't want us to have guns, man. No, I'm just, uh, we're not talking. Yeah, I could. No, goddamn. Oh, yeah, I can make deep commentary on this episode. And I go to Vietnam. Yeah. I went to our generation's Vietnam. The Vietnam. 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 Yeah, yeah. Vietnam. That's what I call it. All right. You don't call that? That's what all the military guys call it. <laughs> it's our own personal. But I like that idea. I like the idea that maybe it is. I mean, the movie hasn't idea. shown us that he's. Uh, uh, well, wait. At this point, when he's having the flashback, it has been revealed that he's writing the Vietnam memoir. Yeah, yes. already. Yeah. So and, they have and set he that like up. keeps like sweating yes. every time he remembers it. He's always like. <laughs> <laughs> Right, he so has I to get this out of like, system. I was thinking like throughout the whole movie that, okay, so he starts thinking about his time in Vietnam and he starts writing about it. And this is whole, just like a traumatic episode that's happening inside of his head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that it's like, um, kind of like Babadook, you know, where it's yeah. like, you don't know whether it's happening inside the yeah. person's head or whether it's really happening to them. Well, this is one of these things that like, I mean, I guess this kind of goes back to the screenplay, right? I don't know if we mentioned this, but uh, Fred oh, yeah. Decker, who uh, wrote uh, and directed Monster Squad, Monster Squad mm-hmm. and Night of the Creeps, two fucking under, underrated classics from the 80s that you should check out, definitely. But he wrote the script of this. And so, you know, the story, I guess that... Well, he, that, didn't write, he wrote the story. Some guy named Ethan something wrote the script. Oh, did he? I thought yeah. it was the other way around. No, it was story by Fred Decker, then... Uh, oh, Screen Ethan Play Wiley. By Ethan the, the, Ethan okay. Whoever. Who wrote House 2, the second story. <laughs> That's Cat a great, great puppy. Greatest tagline. Yeah. Greatest tagline. Greatest tagline. Great title. Yeah. Um, but I guess, you know... When you're trying, I try to divorce myself in some ways from the like what you saw, the way the director did the movie, and like how it was written. Right. So, like, could it be written in a way that because when you watch this movie, there's no way really that he's having these, uh, you know, that, he, that there is any chance that he's crazy. Mm-hmm. It's the fucking house is full of monsters, and that's what's actually happening right. yeah. well, because it's the- a fun kind of funny horror movie, yeah. But like, if you just look at the script, it's like, and you shot it in a different way with less big 
you know, sculpted animatronic <laughs> creatures in it. <laughs> could you play sure. this off? Like, with the, the same Make script. it a psychological yeah. thriller? But the monsters, yeah. Could you? But the you think? I think so. The whole time I was thinking that. Yeah. That you could totally make, twist just a few things, take out the, the monsters, and you can make it a psychological yeah, horror. Yeah, the whole Absol- thing was just a psychological horror. Absolutely, yeah. But the monsters were part of the psychological He's a horror well, yeah. writer. So the monsters were part of the horror, and then his Vietnam flashbacks, you know, added the other part. That's why it's like, the monsters are important, and yeah. they add the fun of the movie. Well, I get that. I'm just like, if you were to do it with like less stylistic yeah. monster, mm-hmm. with it, without that specific style mm-hmm. of monster, like they kind of went yeah. for like the cartoony. You're right. Like yeah, a, yeah, a cartoony yeah. well, kind of monster. The Evil Dead. What's the '80s, right? It's right. The Ghostbusters. The Evil Dead. It's like you want them to be scary, but I mean, they come out at surprising moments. Mm-hmm. I mean, I like how it's like right from the get go, he sees his aunt, and she lays out the ground rules. Of, like it'll trick you. I didn't think it was gonna get me. But it get, I mean, and that's really the only exposition you have for like this is all personally attached to him. Mm-hmm. All the monsters, all the whatever. The fact that like this tricked me. It, the house tricks you to killing yourself. It's like that's a fucking ghost story, dude. Like <laughs> that's awesome. Not a lot of like I've never really heard that in ghost movies. That it that fourteen away. Yeah. But it tricks you to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the the room once you go was in, this written before fourteen away. I don't know when then Stephen King. Yeah, yeah. I don't know when, when he, he wrote, wrote it. it. I'm guessing he wrote that after but 86, still, but I could be wrong. You know, still most of these movies aren't it. necessarily, you know, they all have the backstory of the, this is your character who is possessing the house. That's yeah. usually what stories of right. these ghost movies. That's why I like how this movie really goes away from that. It doesn't like bog it down in reality of like, if we find this kid buried in the cellar, all we have to do is bring him to the church. And, you know, it's just like, that's the easy out. You know, this movie really plays with you. Uh, I mean, right from the get go when, I mean, shit, we were all talking and laughing when, uh, for some reason, William Katz is scared of the closet. I, you know, it's one of those things the movie does that's weird. It's like, it tries to be like suspenseful. It's like, why is he already scared of opening this closet? Like, when he starts packing that scene in his apartment? No, no, because, no, no, this is after he gets to the house. It's because of the the photo, uh, the, the painting that he sees the painting that his aunt has done where the closet is the centerpiece of it, right? Yeah. So isn't he like she's wary she's of it? Because the, the, re, uh, the realty dude that like, brought him through the house just to kind of give us the audience a little explanation because mm-hmm. why would you if it was left to you why would you need that real guy there <laughs> right, yeah. except for to tell the audience like yeah. yep this house is crazy <laughs> yep i was like is, is that's why i was this? so confused was like, did he buy the house <laughs> yeah. did he inherit it why is this realtor there yeah was there so had confused. there wasn't the inheritance speech yeah there really wasn't you just he was at the funeral so you're like okay this was his and he had a story about how his aunt raised him you know. Well, you bet he had to tell that to the exposition guy, the the realtor. Yeah, yeah. like that <laughs> happened in that. Well, I was like, I was, I guess this time around, maybe I was more confused about like the the relationship that was actually taking place between the aunt. Maybe they added and, the kid story. What if that's edited in because it's only in a few parts? So what if he was like getting inherited the house in the original script? I'm just saying, could not that could not be it at all. But I'm just thinking, like, why would that scene be there? If they were just going to, you know... Which scene are you talking about now? The, the realtor? realtor. If he wasn't going to get the house inherited, if there wasn't well, that scene... I guess that scene made sense to me because the the subsequent scene, he meets the neighbor, which is played by George Went from yeah. uh, Cheers TV Nosey show. Nosy neighbor in the 80s. And the, the neighbor is like, you know, oh, great, there's somebody else moving in here and there's a funny <laughs> joke because he's like, that lady who was in here before, she was crazy, <laughs> this old bitch was blah, blah, blah. He just blah. went on and he's on. He's like, that was my aunt. But a heart of gold, <laughs> though. <laughs> she was real, looked younger than her age. <laughs> yeah. Really, I mean, that, that was great. That's a that classic was a pretty good joke. moment. <laughs> but I guess really good joke. here's my thing. So, so the realtor thing scene and the scene with George went seem like they're part of the same movie because mm-hmm. in this universe, I used to like my aunt raised me, and that was many years ago, and I haven't been back here in a while. Now I've taken possession of this house, and I move in, and this is the neighbor who's lived here for God knows how many years. And I'm a new neighbor moving in, basically, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But our flashbacks, which pepper the story, yeah. basically say that the that at some point Roger Cobb and his wife, the beautiful Kay Lenz, who should have been in more shit, right? <laughs> she should have been. Uh, she was beautiful. The very tan. Yeah, the very tan <laughs> Kay Lenz. So they lived in no, the house we don't with know the that. aunt, or they at least, at least were stayed visiting? there, or okay. visited, or they were yeah. known to visit. But George went, didn't know them. Yeah. Yeah. But the lady across the street did because she knew. Are oh, you here with your wife this time? She oh, knew right. that. Oh, she was just checking see, to see if he was married. Like, oh, maybe you're right. Thing with the kid disappearing happened. Did it? 
did it happen before? Okay, so before the aunt died, and then the aunt died. Yeah, wouldn't the neighbor left, know? He's so happened. nosy. He'd yeah. be like, "Hey, didn't your isn't your kid yeah, like the one right. that disappeared like yeah. in the pool?" <laughs> yeah. It, it, yeah, that's why I'm like, what if the kid? What if they added that? Because they're like, we need more of a conne- heart connection in this movie. What yeah. if they added the kid? Well, it's almost like it feels like a red kind of. The yeah. only thing that that really does is it's like, I mean, I guess it says that the kid is in the house because he disappeared it's in the house. Goal? Mm-hmm. It's a goal for the story. Yeah. Like, oh my god, they, you know, because uh, well, there's like a rag covering that, and he sees like, oh my god, my son's in the bathroom mirror. You know? <laughs> yeah, because the old lady has painted the picture as like the find the clue to where you is can the find clue. Your kid. Like twelve is o'clock yeah. in the closet. <laughs> like she even did like all the paintings. There's all these paintings in the house, and they all have like there's the uh, the um, the garden tools yeah, that the fly around. Yeah. You know, so she yeah. painted clues and yeah. that's what's kind of funny like i wish we had a little bit more backstory on the ant because she's this crazy person painting clues to what the house is doing that's cool that's a yeah. cool idea or is going to be doing in the future the yeah where the ant comes in and is it is it after the kid disappears and she's like laughing she just smiles like, at the, the cop yeah she's like smiling at the cop and that was so creepy that was cool <laughs> like, was she creepy. unintentionally creepy was yeah. she the uh was she the uh hotel manager in, in the mouth of madness no that's no? uh one of the not lynn shea but i think it's one of the shays right is it no maybe no okay but it's it's not it's this not one her. no we do have a lot of friday 13th um alumni yeah the uh the, the guy, sheriff ma'am we didn't find any boy. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the the one black cop was the guy from Jason Goes to Hell who plays uh, the bounty hunter. Yeah, Mike. Is it Michael Williams? Something Williams. But Stephen Williams. But you will probably know him from the X-Files where he played X for many, many a year. Uh, in the X-Files. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, also, you have Kane Hodder heading up the stunt team. Yeah. Future Jason. Yep. Yeah, Usually. and we already mentioned Harry Manfredini did the music to this and did, you know. I think Sean Cunningham's like the only person who employed him. <laughs> but he's good. This may be his best score. <laughs> Maybe, even though it still sounds like Friday 13th. Oh, yeah, it sounds oh, like definitely. Friday 13th Part 6, specifically, which came out <laughs> like the same year. Yeah. It was like, da doom doom But I've always liked his music. I don't know why, like. I, I don't know. He's that's why I, I realized it's like, oh, this director sucks because this is supposed to be the chase scene through the hallway, and it's and that's supposed to be the most exciting part of Friday Thirteenth movies, and Steve Miner just didn't bring it. Yeah. So like, as the guy's writing it, I mean, this in this way, it's almost like The Shining, right? A dude is like writing and getting kind of obsessed with his what he's writing. Yeah. And, you know, not that in The Shining, he's like, I'm a mobster, see, you know, but <laughs> since this guy has his own, like, um, well, they paint, he's him. got his own horror experience in Vietnam where he's with uh, Moose from Night Court, <laughs> yeah, Richard Mall, yeah. and uh, I mean, basically, he's supposed to be almost like a Gomer Pyle character, right? This guy's kind of crazy, he's your, your, you know, Dolph Lundgren, can you hear me? Like, he went on the deep end in Vietnam. He's the Rambo, Travis. It's 1985. No, he's not the Rambo, damn it. Rambo is supposed to be a nice story about, like, you know, damn it, we treat these people horribly, and they sur- they but sacrifice the their soldier. psyche for... Yeah. Well, in his own mind. He's yeah. his own soldier of fortune. But he's careless at war, and he ends up getting shot, and he's like, he tells William K, he's like, kill me. And the dude's like, I, you know, I fuck, I can't. Like, that, I thought that that could have been touching, <laughs> like, if it wasn't Moose. <laughs> <laughs> but like I like William Kent didn't necessarily do a bad job, you know, but that was like really tough. Like he's about to slit his throat and he's just like, I can't, I can't. So he has that horror of like leaving a dude behind to get tortured from the Viet Cong. You know, it's like that's fucking deep, you know. I mean, I thought the jungle settings look shitty. And oh like, Jesus. Yeah, we gotta talk about well, that. Well there was like bit. sunlight and moonlight. It's like why is there sunlight on their backs and moonlight in the front of them? Yeah. Like what the fuck is going on here? Yeah. Is that the closet door? I don't know. Yeah. No, the the set for the, the for Vietnam is uh I don't know how to explain Only it. Ten feet wide. Yeah. By yeah. Light. <laughs> yeah, and packed with foliage. I mean it is like and those scenes kind of play out the way that like 
I mean, it's like the high school play version of Vietnam. Yes. <laughs> you know? Yes. It really feels like what in kind of alternate universe have we, you know? And I'm like, maybe there weren't like all, but I'm like, Deer Hunter was before. I mean, like, you know, movies where you'd actually do something that looked like a jungle and didn't look like we got all the model grass. You know, that's what yeah. it looked like. The, the stuff that you use in like, you know, little model uh, uh, builds and all that it stuff. It definitely looked more like Gilligan's Island. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah it, it was really Gilligan's did. Island. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> budgetary but i'm like but in some ways it 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 went along with the style of the movie right it didn't because the rest of the movie i, I mean we're not describing this right it sounds more like a a serious psychological <laughs> horror movie but this movie is batshit fucking crazy yes <laughs> yes it's all oh, over the place it's awesome it's all oh, over man. the place I think yeah. that's the evil deadness of it right when you get to one location and you have to have like I mean everywhere he turns he doesn't know what's gonna happen like when he first opens that closet door and that monster comes out that's the scene I was talking about like we're all talking or whatever the monster <laughs> and you still catch it by surprise yeah. because you're it just does. like what yeah. the fuck it just comes out of nowhere yeah but I mean, even we, I think we all think, oh, there's there's going to be a ghost in the closet. It wasn't a ghost. It was a fucking monster. It was a, monster. It was it a, a big cool, alien monster. Cool monster, dude. Cool monster. This is a movie where if you go into the tool shed, the the tools will start attacking you. That's what's like, and, where's the house video game? But like, this is like, I, I mean, like, okay, you know, I mean, even if I you know, were to say this to you, listener, it's like, you know, so the tools attack. Like, okay, I expect that in a movie. But no, this movie, the tools follow you into they the house. Come back they, later. they come back later. They go up the stairs. They, they knock, knock on, on the, the door. door. Oh, he opens the door at one point, and there's like, you know, the the, the shovel is there. Fucking clippers knock on the bathroom door. That's awesome. And he is able to use this, and this is a credit to the, the, the screenwriter or the oh. filmmakers. They are able to use these tools that are flying around as the punchline to the scene where a mos- another yeah. monster is attacking. He opens the door and the, the hedge clippers come in and behead the monster. And, so, and he's like, yes. And it's like a big moment. Everybody in the room here watching this thing was like cracking up, which I assume is what was intended when they made this. But I mean, it's just like the weirdest it's like, fucking yeah. tonal, like what the hell are we watching? Because then it also fucks you up with, uh, I mean, the, no- the nosy neighbor uh, who kind of comes in and out and knows that this dude, like something weird is happening with this guy. Um, and he steals his uh, telephone book and like calls his wife just to let him know, like, "Hey, your husband's here." And he's talking about seeing ghosts. Yeah, he might. Immediately before that, that same nosy neighbor lets himself into the house with yeah. a bunch of beer and Chinese food. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> being a good neighbor. Just like, so what's with all the cameras? Yeah. What? Well, I mean, I want that there? 80s neighbor. I've never had that guy that'd be like, hey, dude, get it fucked up. Yeah, he just walks well, in with beer and Chinese food and is like, why are you putting all these cameras at your closet and wearing yeah. an army uniform? Oh, never mind. Let's have some beer and Chinese food. Well, I did like how with the next scene, he's like, he's like, yeah, I'll tell you all about the next scene he's just like yeah and then my wife he's like cool that's sad man so what's with the camera (laughs) (laughs) well this is one of the greatest like cul-de-sacs or whatever neighborhoods to live in because not only do your neighbors come your next door neighbors come over at like midnight bearing beer and chinese food but the sexy neighbor across the street like likes to just swim in your pool every once in a while that's how they get uh, attention they they like it yeah that scene did not go where I was thinking it was going to go. She's well, like, was... I know when men want to work and when they want to play. Yeah, we'll like... play later. So then she shows up with her kid and well, like we're needs skipping a, over her, a babysitter. A babysitter. Wife. Yeah. Very weird. We're skipping over his wife and that because that's the scene where he's trying to bury the monster that was his wife. Like when the neighbor calls his wife, the wife shows up. And that's I think that's a really cool scene where he that's where he gets his shotgun out and all this shit. And, you know, then, like, the wife is sitting uh, at the front door, and, you know, he's got to do that nervous explaining thing. What are you doing with that gun? The, the, <laughs> that shell drops, and she can, like, you know, she uh, bends down to pick it up and comes up a monster. That was awesome. Yeah. yeah. That was fun stuff. He blows her away. And then it's the moment where, like, of course, when the body hits the floor, it's the wife again and not yeah. the hideous monster. And you're like, oh, shit, like, this movie suddenly got real. Yeah. Like, what do yeah. you do? <laughs> like, I mean, I can't imagine... This movie, if, you know, with that scene being he actually killed her, because it's like it's way too serious. Yeah. Well, I suppose we're talking about a movie where like child abduction is a thing. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the idea, like if he actually killed his wife at that point, like, I mean, the the character, the tone of it would have just been yeah. like shattered. But yeah. for a while, you're left thinking like. 
Did they really fucking do things? Like, he killed his wife. He just shot his wife in the stomach. He was hallucinating, <laughs> thinking that she's a monster, and he fucking shot her in the goddamn stomach. Yeah. Then it's like the Keystone cops show up, and uh, he has to hide the body, and it gets all yeah. very... And it's and like, it why you would hide the... Stick. That's why I'm yeah. thinking... Because I think he thinks it's also a trick. That's why he hides the body. You know, because he's, he's like, he can't be dead. You can't be dead. You know, so he's like, well, I'll just get rid of the body because she might be alive still. This could just be another trick. But, you know, that's a monster. Not even his wife. That's genius. That's great. Yeah. That's how you play. A, that's why I'm like, this is Evil Dead. It's Evil Dead. Even the hand. The dog digs up the the well, he loose dismembers hand. The, well, yeah. the, dismembers the monster. Yeah. That's where he talks to the uh, hot lady in the backyard. <laughs> Yeah, like while he's digging the holes. I don't understand because where's the nosy neighbor there? We established that these monsters are like are a reflection of of his thoughts. Is yeah, that what he's you're a saying? horror writer, so so why was the wife monster? Why did she look like that? He clearly like has nice thoughts about his wife, well, but no, she the, looked... but the house is just doing that to him. He's not choosing the forms that the okay. house. I mean, the house is just using what this guy does. What what is going to like? I mean, if she the guy writes like horror, the mom from Honey Boo Boo, like she was like jacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's very uh, kind of. I mean, once again, kind of Evil Dead too ish. Mm-hmm. She's the big fat mom <laughs> yeah. in the basement. Yeah. It like, kind of has that sculpt, you know, lots of the sculpted wrinkles and all that. It's yeah. like a purple skinned, you know, yeah. big lipped over. But you this know. is that kind of cartoony <laughs> version, like you're talking about. Yeah. How there's like kind of. It a... talks like a fucking chipmunk. Yeah. When she actually talks. <laughs> it does. Which but, is another, like, but remember how we, ju- we just watched Legend where, like, the, basically the devil was like, woo ha! <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, like, something in the 80s was like, it must be high pitched. It's like, ooh, it's shrill and scary. But we're just the like, devil didn't talk like that. <laughs> the devil had a Tim Curry voice. No, well, that was Darkness, father, the son. Yeah. The father was like, woo! <laughs> Make her one yeah. of us. Make her one of us! It's like, yeah. is he a dark fairy? Is he a... Yeah. So, but uh, it's a little bit of fun. Well, I mean, this... Uh... I mean, if we if we can't explain what's going, well, I mean, like there's like a rogues gallery of monsters that show up in this the house, fish, which, which is kind which of which is the, yeah, the there's a fucking so- oh, mountain sword deer. Fish. The it's the deer in Evil Dead. Oh. Yeah, you're right. Actually, don't tell me. Even yeah. this is Evil Dead, but made like a few years later. I still think that's where they got the inspiration for that big mouth Billy Bass. For thing. sure, <laughs> this, this is it. Take yeah. me to the river. It's a weird scene because, like, you know, he's like he's combating this like moving swordfish on his mantelpiece, and you're like, okay, so the man's like he's either going insane or this is actually happening. So he goes out to the shed, gets a shotgun, and blows a hole in it. But when the thing dies, it makes this like. Really sad and pathetic yeah. noise. You're like, oh, uh, poor fish. Like, what was it doing to you? It was mounted. It's not like in a movie. Dude, this dead, house this works on fish. your emotions. <laughs> I like it. I like it. There's also, uh, at some point, he discovers a um, portal to the void. It was I guess. in the closet, right? When uh, it was in the, it was the in nosy the... neighbor comes over and he's the like, there's a raccoon. The yeah. <laughs> and like just when I open this up, shoot it with this harpoon gun. Didn't he say a raccoon the size of a Saint Bernard? Yeah, yeah. 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 I love George Went in those scenes because, He's like, great. I mean, like, there's a, there's a different way I guess you could play this character where you know the nosy neighbor is somehow more sinister or obnoxious, but he's not really. I mean, like as a character, he's. Even at the beginning when, you know, he's like, oh, you're Roger Cobb, you know, the famous writer and all that. And he's like, you know, I just need my solitude and all that. And he's basically like, okay, I'll leave you alone. I mean, he becomes kind of annoying to Roger Cobb, but not in a way that's, you know, he's not looking for his own personal gain. I guess maybe that's the yeah. thing that separates him from the way I imagine. Well, he's just nice 80s now. neighbor, like, yeah. like yeah. kind of the overset nice guy, you know. <laughs> well, even like when he steals, you know, we're like he steals the uh, the address book so he can call Roger Cobb's wife, and it's like, okay, so she's a famous actress who's apparently like I don't know if Roger Cobb is like watching all of her movies throughout the movie or like it's, it's the they, house. They're the, they're the only. <laughs> 
movies that are on TV. Because he turns the well, window she's... off with the with the remote. So oh when he God, sees his yes. son in the like, we didn't even talk about that. It's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. He sees his son in the window, like help me, daddy, and he just like turns it off with the remote control. In the movie, doesn't even like. <laughs> well, even address it at all. That's why I was like, I don't think he is watching his wife on TV. Like, did he just he, turn the his ghost is show, yes, keeps did. reminding him of his wife to like drive him deep because this movie wants uh, the the house wants to kill him. So it's just reminding him of all the shit that fucks him up. Yeah. But I guess, you know, oh, that, that's true. But I think that he also, like, like, when the guy gets the, when he calls the uh, the famous actress, yeah. he doesn't, like, he is genuinely a decent guy, he's right? He's not I mean, starstruck. He's just yeah. like, I'm concerned about your husband. Like, yeah. yeah, and, and he doesn't pure, work his own yeah. angle. And the and pure that. comedy would, uh, like, have it with be like, I love this movie, or I love, you know, <laughs> like, to end the conversation. If they would write it that way today, that's But it's kind of nice it. that, like, yeah, like you said, he, they didn't have a little, like, just a stupid joke. The guy is generally concerned. Like, yeah. eh, this guy's cracking up, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I do like the idea that eventually they get to, you know, I mean, because that's the dream team up, right? You get uh, William Cat and, uh, uh, I'm going to say Norm, Norm. McDonald, but that's not his <laughs> name. George went together, like, ghost chasing for at least one scene in the movie. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> Where it's like, gun. right, yeah, we're going to use this harpoon gun and discover this portal. He's wearing the goggles and just shaking, holding that. <laughs> uh, that's, that that's burned in my retinas. That's a and pretty was, good moment. I, this this is the, where, like, they should go on in the sequels, right? Those two guys. <laughs> I love it. You know, because uh, that's the other thing we should say about, like, the, the character designs. Uh, uh, William Cat is, like also playing into his psychology, like, once he starts writing his Vietnam memoir, he yeah. wears his fatigues in, like, yeah. every yeah. scene. Well, it was yeah. the one... He sleeps in his kid's bed, too, which is also weird, but... Yeah. Yeah. Ever since he was going to uh, take pictures, that's when he started wearing the fatigues, right? Because he had his little, like, test mm-hmm. run of running out of the house. Like, I'm going to open this and run out of the house... And that's where he wrote it, but he yeah. never took it off ever since. Like he <laughs> yeah. just, he just kept went it off. Yeah. He's because well, he's at war. He's at war. Yeah, he's back in the mindset. I mean, there is like a there there's is a psychological like, <laughs> angle to this. It's movie. his battle armor. Uh, that's why I like yeah. this movie. It's like a ghost movie should be more than just hello or like a painting, like looking at you. Like it, there should be more to ghost, yeah. and this movie does that, especially with the the Nightmare on Elm Street angle where. Yeah, reality could break down at any moment. And to me, it's even a little stronger because, cause like, Nightmare on Elm Street, you always need the kid in classroom kind of, like, mm, like dozing off. And then, like, as soon as they do the one head bob, you're like, oh, they're in the dream world. <laughs> and, like, anything to do beyond this point. But this movie, you don't need the head bob. He could just hear something and boom, you're going to see something weird or whatever, you know? Well, I feel like the head bob was every time he tried to write his novel about Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah, maybe. Because that happened right before the fish. Um, That happened right before the yeah. whole incident with the shotgun. Mm-hmm. And see, that's what reinforced the whole, it's just him having Vietnam flashbacks and it's triggering like a break from reality. Yeah. But we know his aunt killed her, so, so we do know at least it can't just be his psychological breakdown. The ghost is just... Or like nudging the psychological breakdown, well, we, so it'll kill him. But sad. but from the psychological angle, all we know is that the ant hung herself. He saw a vision of yeah. his aunt, yes. which could have been a hallucination. Well, yeah. Said I killed but myself. But she painted clues. Okay. Is he imagining the painted clues? Yeah, Maybe. It is objective uh, reality. Yeah. The fucking house is haunted. I've solved it. Boom. <laughs> Just because she's painting. And I, but I like how there does, like, once again, dude, I love how there doesn't need to be an origin for the house. But wait, wait, wait. It's great. What if the aunt's paintings were what helped drive his delusions? That's what I was thinking. Because she was raised, she told him all that stuff. He was raised in the house. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. Because he, yeah, he's, he's having the. He saw the painting of all the garden implements yeah. flying we're around. We're doing the house remake. <laughs> Yeah. The yes. house remake coming from the Saturday Night Freak show. But we I, got all the answers, and we're going to make this a good movie. Well, I it's bet a good you movie, that, that a great movie. these things are probably, they were on Fred Decker's mind when <laughs> yeah. he wrote it. I bet you, like, the guy yeah. thought this way. It is that's a complex why it's like, thing. Wow, the yeah. movie that, that they made is like, it's a fa- but I mean, we got I it. Know. We it got it be, all. It could be deep. It yeah. Really it's kind of, it, I think it is, damn it. That's why I brought it to the free show. <laughs> <laughs> it is that deep. You just have to think about it. It's like it, they just scraped the top off the movie and that's what we see, but there's like yeah. deeper levels. Dude, this is, Jacob's this Ladder right? means Evil Dead. <laughs> yeah. <It's> inception. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going back to your, the Evil Dead thing with like the monsters, there was a, when he discovers the portal in the, uh, the medicine cabinet, mm-hmm. he breaks a glass mm-hmm. of where he sees his son. And he knows his son is in the medicine cabinet. But it, 
it opens yeah. to a void that he repels down into. And before yeah. he does that, I guess there's all these like monster hands and tentacles that yeah. come out of yeah. it where you're like, yeah. somebody sculpted this just for one scene. I always love it when you put all that effort there's into it. There's like an alien tail, it looks. <laughs> well, it's like the alien tail, right? Yeah, but it's like a tentacle deal that wraps around his all arm. Right. The monster hands and tentacles coming out of the medicine cabinet, as well as seeing his son in the medicine cabinet, when in the previous scenes when he'd opened the medicine cabinet, he was going for the Valium. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just saying. Yep. <laughs> for sure. You're actually making me think that this movie was badly directed. And he spills. Yes! Oh, it was. It definitely was. Because he drops the Valium. Yeah, it's like scene. brilliantly yeah. written and yes! badly directed. It's like his salvation and his damnation at the same time as the drug that's helping him keep his PTSD away. Yeah. Yes, and it, this and it, whole movie, I was waiting for these things to come yeah. together. I'm like, this is in his head. Yeah. It's going to come back. But it's in it's there, in damn it. Head. This yes. is what, I mean, it's yeah, the directing happen. sucks, but it's there. Yeah. Well, I don't know. We, that took, that... we walked away from it mm-hmm. with all this information. It's just there for you to work out. Well, I don't the movie doesn't tell you. I mean, I would counter that. I don't think the director thing sucks because the no, movie that the director made <laughs> is an entertaining movie but like the director i think had the or steve minor had the 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 idea to design the monsters the way they did and to shoot it the way they did and shoot in the location cast it with richard mall and george went right i mean some of that humor had to have been in the script obviously right. but like if you put richard mall as your you know as this guy <laughs> Like you can't take it seriously. I mean, it's kind of it's playing to the his pre built in audience. Especially, it's, it just seems like it's oh. it's like there's this kind of schizophrenic thing happening yeah. between like Fred Decker's writing this like I'm writing this fucking horror script. It's got all this stuff in it, and like you know, it's deep and it's it's connected and it's tight. Well, this is also produced by Roger Corman. <laughs> yeah, is so, that in the yeah, Rod, opening so Roger, titles? I didn't yeah. see. I didn't see him either. That. But it was on the Voodoo Info. Oh, that's right. It was yeah. on Voodoo uh-huh. Info. It was Sean so maybe Cunningham it was, and Oh, because it's New yeah. World Pictures. New World Pictures. Uh, so he distributed it? Oh, that's, that was his studio. So he had some... Some say. Some, some money. So I'm sure they're just like, yes, this will be this deep psychological... What? It made how... Like, Poltergeist and Evil Dead had made how much money? We're yeah. putting monsters in it. Yeah. <laughs> like the but flying like, uh, skeleton monsters. And oh, that was dude. like... That's an Evil Dead monster. That's Evil Dead monster. <laughs> yeah. That, okay, the way he it finds spins the shotgun. It spins the oh shotgun. Oh, my God. I lost my shit. <laughs> I, I lost my shit. <laughs> Once again, it's using... It's, Willi- it's using William Katz. Cat. Cats. <laughs> Damn it. I want to say cats. Plural. It's like it's like kit with two T's. Only it's cat. 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 Oh, it's not. Car it doesn't want to stop R's. there. Cat. I want to say, I want to say cats. Yeah. Cats. But yeah. Fucking pterodactyl skeleton. Oh, great, great yeah. stuff. But it's like it's weird, right? You're like, what? That the can hell? really work a shotgun. As you're declining, as you're dropping yourself into the void, which I'm like that that rope get up that he had. Where that was awesome. I'm like, does it? Yeah, they that teach works. you that in basic training or something. And, uh, I'm sure they did in those days. <laughs> That's what I was reading it as. I'm like, he knows yeah. how to do this because he was in the uh, military yeah. for sure. Well, because you could see that when he was tying the knots, he was yeah. doing like sailors' yeah, knots. Sailor knots. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he wasn't. Wasn't he an infantryman or marine? Yeah, but you still, <laughs> yeah. but you still use no, knots. <laughs> you can repel. In the army, if you call the FBI <laughs> for a missing kid, I mean, you can <laughs> learn how to in the army, yeah. But he descends into the void and meets his pterodactyl thing that shoots him with his own shotgun. I mean, it's just it's, it's, it's played for laughs. A lot of this movie is played for laughs. It's very, I think it's very funny though. Like, I am like, you know, have a problem with uh, you know, a lot of movies trying to be funny, but this one legitimately like worked <laughs> yeah. a lot of times yeah. and the scares I think happened at just off uh, at, like off that... time enough that they actually kind of do catch you by surprise he's trying, they do. He's, he's trying to be that he's that ash character right he's this frantic <laughs> dude running around a house dealing with weird shit whatever but I, I think just that story is a fun story having a, a frantic dude Dealing with different dimensions in his house, mm-hmm. man. That's a great... He plays it off very well. I mean, yeah. just he in that a good scene job. where he's explaining it to uh, to George Wendt about the... You know, like, we know what he's talking about and what he's seen, but he's coming <laughs> off as, like, not crazy. Like, that's how George Wendt's supposed to perceive it. But to us, you know, it's like, you see him as frantic and, like, I have to explain it to this guy so he'll stay here. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, that's... But that's <laughs> yeah. the point of view that you have. It's not like, this guy's crazy. It's like, yeah. I see what he's doing. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know? It's a pretty good performance, I think. I right. think so. In spite of the V-neck sweater. Yeah, well, the 80s. <laughs> I don't think I don't think any, like, sleeve uh, touched his uh, wrist, right? Every, you know, like, all his sleeves are pushed up to his elbows. Oh it's the that damn 80s. Was oh, yeah. That was Seriously, amazing. Seriously, you can see, like, his sternum, basically. Yeah. Like, 
Oh, I, well, as Holly said, it was I, the I Ken doll. Like he looked like a Ken doll. Yeah. Yeah. It was sexy. Yeah. But I like how the bad guy of the house chooses uh, the moose character, right? The guy that he uh, he left to die in Vietnam. Yeah. You know, the, the he chooses him. Well, I like that scene where, where he goes in the void and he falls. He ends up falling into, or the, into the monster shoots his uh, rope. Yeah. And he falls in water, then crawls out of a river in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. And finds his son in a tiger cage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. So the idea here is that the the character Big Ben that he let die or whatever yeah, that Big he didn't ben. kill in Vietnam has somehow returned from beyond the grave, aided, I suppose, you know, off screen by the force it, in the house. Uh, I still think it's just the house fucking with. Him. I don't think like the ghost of Big Ben. I don't think that. I think it's just the house fucking with him. It's trying to get like I know your personal fucking bullshit, and this is the form I'm taking. Well, even okay, if it we says can put this like to the test, right? Because William is- Katz says like, oh, you know, you came here. I mean, he does allude to that in the movie that like, you know, I told you I'd come here for you or whatever the fuck. But yeah, I, just I told you house- I'd get you. Basically, but the dies, house knows I'll his you, memory Roger. because supposedly when uh, Roger didn't kill him or Roger. Yeah. When Roger didn't kill him. He gets dragged off, and he hears the guy says, "I'll get you or whatever," because you didn't yeah. tell me. Basically, you talk basically the, ha- yeah. the house is playing on the skeletons in your closet. That's what I and think. And in yeah, this case, the actual skeleton. I don't in your think closet. the spirit like, of this guy came from Vietnam yeah. and like joined forces with the house yeah. to get like Roger Kyle. Well, like I said, I think you could put. The- oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, because you can't think that the the ghost came back and had the forethought to kill his aunt, and then all yeah, of this other right. and right. kidnap his son right, and exactly. hold him hostage. Exactly. Yeah. They would have just, you know, fucked with him, basically. Yeah. Well, this the resolution, I guess. I mean, I think bears this what you're saying out, right? Because the way that he defeats the 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 specter of Big Ben, yeah. like after you know, he thinks he throws him off of a cliff at one point. Don't ask. It's a house, and he throws it off the. That cliff. was a cool. Pat, like matte painting though I like yeah. that like that <laughs> angle of yeah. the house it's like from the kitchen the house is torn <laughs> in half and there's like a cliff yeah. that was very like Nightmare on Elm Street 2 right, right yeah <laughs> that wonderful 80s fantasy horror um, yeah. but after he throws him off you see the body like break apart on the rocks the guy's yeah. still alive and the way that uh, Roger beats him is to basically I think Big, Big, tries to, Big Ben tries to cut him mm-hmm. and the cut doesn't appear on Roger because he's like you know what? I'm not scared of you anymore, Ben. And I'm like, okay, so we're saying he knows the house is trying to trick him. Yeah. What was oh, it? I guess that I... that the, that gave him. I guess I didn't see where he had the epiphany. I just saw one minute. I mean, because if I remember correctly, the scenes are cut together. That you know, he throws Big Ben off the in off the mountain. Mm-hmm. Then he goes in looking for the kid. He hears the kid calling to him. He goes to the kid, and the kid is abdu- is uh, being held by Big Ben. Mm-hmm. He's like, what do you think? Oh, you're fucking around with me, Roger, or whatever the hell. Well, but he does. So where talk does he have the epiphany where it's like, I know how to beat? Well, what this. it is, at least how I, it plays out in my head, is like this ghost is chasing him, and the whole time it's really a monologue. It's not like a threatening chase. He's really just being like, "You left me, Roger. Now I'm, you know, blah 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 blah." And at this point, this is when Roger is really at his most, like, sane, because he does keep coming back at him. Like, I tried to do everything. Like, he kind of keeps coming back at him with his own, like, self-like, like, like, almost like self-psychology, right? Like, dude, I tried everything I could. He's working through it in a weird way, right? right, right. So it's not like like a, oh, my God, I got it. He's just talking back to him in defense. Like, like he's he's so guilty. He's been he's been like hurting himself thinking about it. But then when the outside force is actually being like, it's your fault. He's like, it's not my fault. I did what I had to do. He's he's literally working to he, his demons. He's yeah. Like, yeah. literally like getting defensive or whatever. I yeah. also want to talk about real, just real quickly when uh, when the when the monster comes back and uh, Roger. Ends up, he's like, he tells his son to run, and he ends up locking the door because the 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 sergeant is on the outside. I was like, dude, the house is getting him to stay in the house. He's locking himself in the house, even though it's like, yeah, there's a monster coming through the door. But what's really going on in that scene is the house got him to stay in the house. Yeah. I'm like, that's fucking great, dude. That's a monster movie. <laughs> that's a ghost. God it's a it. monster house. He's not, yeah, Can monster we... house. It's not just some little girl down a well did scaring we, you. Did we mention that it's not actually, like, 
what Big Ben looked like. It's now like Lieutenant Skeletor. Did we yeah, talk he looks about like that? Jason. <laughs> this is like, but this is a really, I'm like, I saw this when I was a it's kid. Cool. I thought this was cool. I'm watching it tonight. I'm like, I mean, maybe this is just me. Cool. Maybe you guys didn't like it. I was like in awe of the sculpture work because I know you could see a little <laughs> bit of, you know, the, 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 uh, G or the genie behind the mirror, the yeah. Oz behind the, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Curtain. Um, yeah, behind the curtain. <laughs> yeah. Man but there the was, there when he would talk, there was some kind of remote control articulation oh, in yeah. the a eyebrows and the yeah. mouth. Like head. And I'm like, how are they doing that? Because the actor is under there actually saying the lines. Well, this is after Chucky, right? They moved right? the fucking line. Uh, no. Chucky was two years later. But we know that they have full, like, you know, oh, yeah, I mean, we've seen stuff got, like uh, full no, re- Realistically, if we hadn't been able to see his teeth and mouth behind the oh, mask... Yeah. Yeah, I, it was it was just distracting. Is What's what it was. The rest I, of it looked legit. But you guys that were pointing the only it. Part that took me yeah, out it just seeing his was, teeth behind the. It other was very teeth, distracting. Was like, you guys yeah. were pointing it out, and I was looking for it. And I couldn't. <laughs> I couldn't find it. I know. They actually, yeah, they, I, I had a similar thing. You were saying it. I'm like, oh yeah, I got to look. Maybe for it's that, that one scene. Because I was like something. transfixed by the eye. I'm it's like awesome. looking at his other eye. I'm like, oh yeah, that's is that Richard Mall's eye? Is that him in there? But yeah, I mean, it had a pretty decent, like, full body. I mean, I would say. That that is equal to in its execution and design to the Friday the Thirteenth Part Seven yeah. Jason makeup. And personally, for me, I like or I stupid. figured out tonight that this was the very first horror image I ever saw. Is is that sergeant coming through that window? <laughs> because I always knew. I remember a skeleton shooting a machine gun coming through a window. But I always, uh, I always thought that it might have been American War in London because you have the demon scene, the demon Nazi scenes mm-hmm. shooting the family. But it wasn't until tonight I'm like, oh fuck! No, it's got to be this dude. It's a skeleton <laughs> coming through the window with the machine gun. Yeah. So this was my beginning, guys, right here. It started it all. House, <laughs> house. I love it when that happens. I've had similar things where you're like, for years, oh. there's like that moment, you're like, I don't know, but there was this movie that freaked me out when I was a kid, and then you see it, Dude. finally, and you're like, it's like a weird sensation of deja vu. It's crazy. And you're like, I think I've seen, this is the fucking, mo- it's happening right now. Yeah. Well, my <laughs> other one is Poltergeist 2, when Craig T. Nelson drinks the uh, tequila and eats the worm, then goes inside and like throws up the monster. <laughs> That's another like... I just remembered it, and then it. I mean, I just never really liked Poltergeist too, so I never really watched that much of it. And then when I saw that scene, I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> this scene!" Well, I'm curious, Travis. What did you think of House Two, the second story? Oh, uh, it's horrible. It's got a catter puppy and a. Uh, <laughs> I gotta see this. It's one. got a western. The house is cool. It's weird. It's like, two but it's guys more fantasy. Move into a house. One of them has a connection to an old, like they find an old western zombie. Played by Royal Dano from uh, well, I think he's Ghoulies in a, too. He's was he the, from another dimension, though. Like I thought they found some glow. I fucking no idea. How yeah, stupid! So like and the stupid. three of them end up going on some adventures through time. It's and not space even like a house. horror movie. It's just a weird adventure movie in a weird way. But it was written by things. the Ethan Wiley guy or whatever right? his name was who wrote this one. He Crazy. You know, did the second one, and it was a legit sequel because I remember the first one. I remember when it was in theaters. And I remember it being a decent size. It felt like a decent size hit because of the awareness. And then there was a second one two years later. And now we're at a point where like nobody's fucking seen this movie because it hasn't <laughs> been. It hasn't made it from DVD to. Well, second story like, latest, uh, has a bigger cult following because of how much fucking weirder it is. I don't believe you. No, it's true. Because <laughs> I've seen like online reviews for House Two, a second story, but not this. Really? Yeah. Stupid. It's the catter puppy. People love the catter puppy. It's <laughs> the cutest Googling fucking thing in the right world. Now. As soon as you see it, you'll be like, aw, cute. <laughs> it's a cat. It reminds me of Never Ending Story. Yeah, it's a catter puppy. Uh, <laughs> you want that toy. Yeah. Actually, I was watching this review. Uh, Maybe comic a little book. dark crystal-y. Yeah, that looks yeah. in keeping with the tone of, I guess, like the, the same yeah. designers. The 80s, it looks like. Working, like yeah. Yeah. So William can't gets his son back. You know, that's like the big, that's why I'm like, it almost feels like the son. It could have been an addition to the movie in a weird way. Cause there's only a few scenes that really touch on it. Right. But, uh, so he gets his son back. It's one of those moments where like, well, the wife pulls up in a cab, the neighbor comes out, like everybody that <laughs> what you is need. This, three o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Like, everybody's just hanging out. We need everybody for the end of the movie. Get everybody together. Well, no, cause there was a, 
an explosion. That's why they came outside. Mm-hmm. Oh, right. that's right. That's the right. grenade. The grenade. That was good too. I like yeah. that. Where like he's like, I don't give you the power anymore. You know, that's how you beat a fucking ghost. You don't bury its bones. You just say like, fucking ghosts are stupid. <laughs> just like I'm a fucking grown up. I'm not afraid of you anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. He took the ghost's own weapon and used it against him. Yeah. yeah. He. I'm like, I'm gonna grab your grenade and pull the pin out with my teeth and shove it up under your weird fleshy carapace and then yeah. run away. You know. So you. You got two 80s action deaths. You got falling from a cliff, <laughs> and you got getting blown up with a grenade, like stuff in your belt. That's your Vietnam ending. But it was fun. Yeah. But the kid, like, I don't know. I always feel like this is the part in the movie where I'm a pot. This is the part in the movie where I'm, I'm like, so they're going to be like, you found our kid after three years. Was he in the pool? Where was the kid? In the basement? The he was in a hell dimension. In I the, mean, come on, the cops. Will I want totally to do in, it. in the Saturday Night Freak Show remake. I've always wanted to do like, what if the kid never died? Because the only ma are you. The only time you see the wife is when William Cat first talks to her on the phone when she calls from the award ceremony that she didn't win from, and he like quickly like, I'm at a well, poker party. We're having a great time. I'm a loser. <laughs> <laughs> and then. Uh, uh, the neighbor calls her, uh-huh. and then it's a monster. So we really don't know. We don't know why they got, I mean, you through the movie, you know, they got divorced because the son obviously died, and you can tell there's really not a, they're not, like, happy about being divorced. They're both kind of longing yeah. for each other in yeah. a weird way. They do, like, they show that really well in a few, just a few <laughs> scenes. They show how, like, oh, man, they just, they couldn't handle the loss of their son, so they broke apart. But, like, in my remake, it's like, what if the son never died? What if the son was just in the mom's... The house made him think, like, the house took my son. The house took... Because it's like, that's the only weird thing about this movie is, like, the fact that you got to grab a a kid from another dimension. That's what doesn't work with the... It's a psycho, like... Because, like, well, he didn't grab his son. Like, in my version, yeah, it would be all psychoanalysis or whatever. But no, this movie he literally grabs his son out of a di- out of a ghost dimension. I'm thinking, man, this is like another parallel. This has the fourteen oh eight, right? Because uh, the John Cusack character lost his daughter, mm-hmm. and the yeah. thing kept on playing on the mm-hmm. idea of like you should see when it was printed. Yeah, Stephen King's a hack. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I saw this movie House, and it gave me some brilliant ideas. But I'll do it, Stephen King, better. I've always wanted to do a haunted hotel room, just the room, not a house. John. There's a, yeah. Don't just call it 14. It could have been just called Hotel Room. Mm. House, Hotel Room. 1408 was released in 1999. Yeah, but the rip-off artist. But the, the short book. story. Or, yeah, the story. It wasn't yeah, a- the short story. No. Oh, no, 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 wait, hold on. 1408 That's- short story. I clicked on the wrong thing. Let's see. It was... Captain Google is on the case. <laughs> Captain Google. I've been called worse things. No, that's what we call the first person to look up something on their phone <laughs> is a Captain Google. So, I mean, but I like the ending of this movie. Uh, yeah. I love the freeze frame. Oh, I love I love that it ends with a freeze frame. That's how you ended a movie in the oh, 80s. Shit. You're like, you I know. know what? Story's yeah. over. Time to go home, folks. Like, we don't, I, like, I hate a movie now where the movie ends and it's like, oh, there's still, like, going to be, like, 10 more minutes of, no. like, where these characters it's, are going after this. That kind of sucks, too. It's perfect. He comes walking out with the kid in his army fatigues and he's just, like, the hero shot. Believe it. The kid runs. That's oh, how mommy, you mommy. And, the then the, and, and then it's, it's the freeze frame. He's just, right like, on smiling. Down the freeze frame. Yeah. Like, hero. So we did Done. Captain Google it. So did we see yep, the. I did Captain Google it. 1408 was released in 1999 as an audiobook and in the um it was released as an anthology of short stories in 2002 everything's eventual so so Stephen, Stephen king, king is a hack job <laughs> Stephen <laughs> King wants yep. house and he's like oh that's good but i'm gonna make it better <laughs> do my own goddamn way all right so do we have any uh well, think, random observations think, about house before we know. go to uh, the mailbag is yeah, it time for I, igor everything else will be in wrap up so all right. oh, really all right, Igor, where are you at, sir? Yeah. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Appreciate it, sir. All right, then. No witty jokes. I got nothing. All right. I got nothing. Nothing about the color of his hair, the size of his shoes, the bolts on his Uh, neck, uh, the goo that's dripping from his, the smell that he leaves, the trail of slime that, no? 
I got nothing this no. week, okay. man. I was going to say something about a clot, but I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, if you want to reach out to us. And give us Igor give jokes. Us, yeah, give us some Igor <laughs> jokes. There you go. That's what you can do. Or write to us about tonight's movie or any of the previous movies that we've done. This is episode, I think, 190. We should really find out. I know. We're God closing in on 200, yeah, folks. We, and we need more fans specials. and we need more letters. That's right. We'll make you famous, just like us. Internet radio superstars. We're hopefully you, working on more shows to put up on YouTube, hopefully. Join the family. So you can get a hold of us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can also find us on Twitter. We're Sat Freak Show. That's our handle. And you can write to us the old-fashioned way. It's Saturday night free letter show and pen at yahoo.com. What? Oh, we should get a PO <laughs> I know. We should get a PO box. Get a PO box. <laughs> PO yeah. box to the dank dark dungeon after 4 p.m. <laughs> so this week, <clears throat> Karate Warrior 2 writes in. Okay, this cool. is this is I'm I thinking, want to see that movie. Just okay, well, I'm not gonna blow it, but I think that this is a longtime fan in disguise. Uh he says that this movie, talking about house, this movie did nothing for me. <gasps> It was very long and bland, but bleak is the word I should have used to describe it. You seriously, you're talking about house? We're wondering what? if like possibly, it's bland? are you talking about the Asian movie or yeah, the Yeah, I think you're talking about the Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can see the bleakness of this movie. It's about a guy that lost his son. He this lost is a his bleak family, movie? A lot. Well, I mean, not the tone of the movie, this the story of the movie. movie. So maybe if like oh, I don't want to see that. Yeah, I was gonna say like maybe if something happened to Karate Warrior too, that he, he's bringing it like no, I don't like this story. Yeah. Which I would totally respect Karate Warrior too. Yeah, I love that name. I just wonder if we're talking about the right movie. Maybe if you didn't. Hasu? Yeah. Did you see Hasu? Hasu. Hasu. All right. So you hear that sound? What's that sound? <gasps> Everybody oh be quiet because that oh, means no. it's time for everybody be still. The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Whoa. Toby, that was our butler. That's it's the, best ow. if you don't make eye contact. Okay, the no, death gaze no, of a vulture circling <laughs> above is the look of Lurch. Lurk. <laughs> whoa, 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 copy, whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch your copyright. <laughs> yeah, try calling him that to his face. <laughs> See what happens. Uh, you know what? I'm pretty sure Lurk would take care of it. He, yeah, he's dealt with with copyright infringement before. All right. So wrap ups going around the room and guess who's in the hot seat tonight. First up is Colin. There you go. Uh, <laughs> hello and welcome back. No, uh, the um, house is a movie that uh, I saw when I was very young, had the VHS watched it a lot. Haven't seen it in 20 odd years. Why haven't I kept watching this movie tonight? I was kind of curious how it was going to play. Like some movies hold up. Some don't you watch them. They're like, eh, it looks like it was made yesterday. Some movies look like they shouldn't have been made at all. This one, I was actually surprised. I'm like, where is the love for House? Uh, this movie, I mean, I guess as you're pointing it out, Travis, I, I suppose it is derivative in some ways of some other 80s movies. But when I'm watching it, I don't feel it. You know, I don't feel the overt poltergeist influence, even though, yes, there's a kid who's abducted and ends up, they have to go through a closet to get, but it doesn't feel... <laughs> I guess because it doesn't have that same insidious feels more poltergeist to me than this does. You know what I mean? Uh, it doesn't feel evil deadish because of the setting is different or something. Even though the monsters could be, you would be at home in an evil dead movie. I don't know. Somehow this works for me. Like I was saying before, I think the comedy is good natured and off center enough that it just, it hits you in a way. That it's funny. It's this not stupid dialogue. It's just, Funny situation. Yeah. Yeah. Weird situation. It's not trying too hard. It's just like, I don't know, amusing and a very like, I mean, again, you have to kind of buy into the, the tone that the movie is setting up for you. I mean, it's really early on. I think probably in the bookstore is like when you're like, what in the fuck? These people are <laughs> leering into the camera and like, oh, this is the, what we're going for with this type of, of movie tone. Um, then there's the horror aspect, which is like, I don't think it's necessarily scary. I think it would be for a kid, you know, if you saw Probably this when you were younger. But it's, it's a great kid horror movie. It's surprising. Mm -hmm. Well, aside there's at least one F bomb, so you know. Is yeah. there? Yeah. 
But uh, there's, you know, it's a, it's in Vietnam. In yeah. Vietnam, everybody first, swears. That's right. Yeah. Back, oh. Fucking hand shit. Yeah. yeah. So, but it's the the horror. Okay, so maybe not maybe not scary, but surprising. There's a, even a moment tonight was like, oh, I totally forgot about this. You know, where the guy where Rogers running down the hallway at the end, and all of a sudden, dude re- reaches out. It was like. The music didn't telegraph that. The eye lines didn't telegraph that. I completely forgot about it. It was like, oh, shit, the guy's, like, right there. You know, I mean, it, I was surprised at how often and how effective it was. So that's why, even though we're bagging on, or at least I've been bagging on kind of the direction of the movie as being at odds with what I think, like, the screenplay originally intended, I think the direction of the movie actually works for the type of movie that Steve Miner wanted to make like i think he made a pretty good movie i think this should be called like a legit cult classic of the 80s probably in the same league as like return of the living dead and uh evil dead or uh you know reanimator i mean that's the kind of vibe <clears throat> that we're going for here that fun 80s horror that they don't make anymore yeah. because now we take things i don't think you could do the thing where like the guy's sitting at his keyboard typing and he doesn't like what's on tv and he turns it off and then he looks over at the window and his dead kid is there smiling at him <laughs> so he picks up the remote control and turns the kid off yeah he turns the window you know i mean it's just like that's one of those things where you've leapt outside of conventional logic here We're like what in the hell what kind of rules are you playing by and i think that's the kind of thing that makes this movie uh like fresh, I guess, you know, when you're watching it now, you're like, I have not seen anything like there. I had an experience similar to this in years, you know, and I think it deserves to be seen. And hopefully someone shout factory, if you're out there, right. Or somebody, cause what anchor, <laughs> Bay, anchor Bay did uh, put a, a DVD house, out one and two, wasn't it a house double feature? I, I think so. They put them out individually and then together at one point. And then they might, the rights must've lapsed. We watched it tonight. It's on voodoo. Uh, for rent, but the only standard definition. So as far as I know, then there's no HD master. Yeah. Where's made. the Blu-ray? <laughs> so where is that? Well, I don't know. Maybe there's a problem with some of the new line or new world stuff. Cause Warlock also is not available <laughs> on video, but at least there's an HD master of that. Cause it came out in Germany. So who knows? Maybe there's something house in Germany. Damn we'll Germans. have to track it down, but awesome. uh, hopefully they'll put it out. Yeah. I really enjoyed house. Uh, a lot more than I expected to on this rewatch. I mean, like, seriously, I'm like, this was like, this should be a cult classic from, uh, you know, the eighties. More people should know about it, but that's just me. Uh, I would recommend it. I'll hand it off to Toby. Oh, well, um, <clears throat> I still, um, after having wa- watched this movie for the first time, I'm not sure if it was, um, like a psychological horror or Vietnam flashback or whether it was some kind of science fiction thing where they're dipping in alternate dimensions. But I would definitely say that I've seen a lot of eighties and nineties movies. And this one was very entertaining, definitely unique. Um, I would recommend watching it at least once, maybe twice, depending on how you feel for sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, this movie was fucking all over the place. <laughs> it was all over the place. It was driving me crazy, but I kind of loved it. Um, I thought the the monsters were surprising. That was mm-hmm. so surprising. Like, quite literally. Like, it wasn't what I was expecting, and they popped up when I was not expecting it. And I really appreciated, appreciated that. Because um, a movie like this typically... We we just make fun of it the whole time. This one, I can't say that the writing was bad. It was actually pretty good writing. Yeah, it's not like bad. it really was. The acting wasn't bad. It was actually yeah. pretty decent. Normally, when we watch movies like this, I'm like, oh, the writing was terrible or the acting was terrible. Actually, this was pretty solid. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna lie. This was a pretty entertaining movie. Um, I agree that the direction felt all over the place, but maybe it wasn't. It, I, it was it, it kind of up in the air on that one, and it definitely could have been directed in a completely different way. It, it could have gone a completely different route, but I think this route was really perfect. It was really funny. Like it, it didn't feel forced. It just it felt like it felt like this was a really fun movie. Mm-hmm. It really did. Um, I wasn't expecting that, and I kind of loved it. And I would definitely recommend it. It was a good time. There you go. <laughs> Well, uh, as I said earlier, this movie is special to my heart because obviously it was like the first horror images I like recall seeing, you know, where, you know, in my subconscious, I knew like these images and then, 
you know, years later, uh, uh, found it. But even even after that, I remember the first time I saw the cover of this movie. Oh, yeah. The ding dong, you're dead, mm-hmm. with the severed hand <laughs> oh, yeah. pushing the doorbell. It's a great that alone just captures my fucking ding imagination. Dong, I used to draw the logo, like the lettering of the very strange. I don't know why. I've got <laughs> the, the 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 diamonds, like in the yeah. I don't know. Even uh, even upstairs, past the, the the laboratory and all that, I have uh, a drawing of a zombie hand coming out. It's like. That's like oh, I mean, yeah? that's your house. I'm uh, sure. I'm uh, sure. Like subconsciously, that's how I could draw that hand coming out. It's because like, well, I know a fucking evil hand coming out of so you know or whatever. But uh, but like that alone. I mean, I used to. I mean, I would say I used to love this movie. But I mean, I watched it and watched it and watched it to the point where it's like that's how I can say like, oh, this is made up of three movies. This, this, this. You know, I can see the production behind the movie. So at this point in my life, I mean, that's why I did want to watch it. Cause I'm like, Holy shit. I haven't seen house in like 20 years. You know, I bet like house would be a good conversation. Cause I've always thought this about like, you know, all the psychological angles of the movie. I was like, that's why it is an interesting ghost story to me because it tries to throw, it tries to do both. It tries to give you psychological and a fun eighties, like monster, like, uh, like hoot. And, um, does it like 100% succeed? It does it on both because you know you can't be both, right? You can't be a, a 80s monster who and a psychological ghost movie. So that's why this movie is it exists in this weird like nether world, this weird limbo of like, well, you know, it's not the most original thing you've ever seen. It's not the most scariest thing you've ever seen. It's not the funniest thing you've ever seen. It's not, but it is this, it's there. I agree with you with like it should be up there with like Return of the Living Dead of the 80s because it. Well, I just like that horror. This is why, like, nowadays, whenever, like, we talk about our own, like, horror ideas, I always add comedy to my horror <laughs> ideas because, like, that's what I found so interesting about horror back when I was a kid that I can laugh and be, like, totally scared or interested in the monsters. It's like, that's the best of both worlds. Uh, it takes you to a secure place and, like, takes you to the edge of whatever. I think you have to take the edge off a little bit. Yeah. In a weird way, and you like, should. Like fucking Babadook scared the shit out of yeah. me. <laughs> it's a depressing oh my God. movie. But that should I, be I needed depressing. to laugh. Yeah, in <laughs> the two thousands, it's like horror just became like brutality super. and like super Scary. serious. Like, oh yeah, like, like, that's this what... is a sexual disease. Like, oh uh, all right, fine. <laughs> we used to have like monsters come out of closets. Now this is like <laughs> just a sexual disease. Like, don't have sex. Like, I just want <laughs> flying tools. That's it. Yeah. Flying garden. I want, I, want, I want skulls with bat wings. I want like every tattoo I've ever seen in my life flying at me. I want, you know? I want a, skele- a skeleton pterodactyl to flip a shotgun like John Wayne. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. yeah. But you know me. I'm just thinking this is like Slither. I keep saying yeah. right yeah. of the 2000s. Slither is the closest Slither, thing. Yeah. But you know, I've always been a huge monster fan. So anything with monsters, I'm a, you know, I, I just have a soft spot in my heart. Uh, but I totally recommend this if you've never seen it. Uh, I, and I also, I can understand it if you don't like it. Because for an 80s romp, there is some slow moving parts to it. Like, I mean, for only a 93 minute movie, you could probably cut 10 minutes of it. <laughs> like, to be honest, I mean, it could be 88 minutes and not suffer <laughs> at some all. Some of the Vietnam parts, you're like, where the fuck are they going yeah. with this? <laughs> you almost don't need yeah. it in a yeah. way. I mean, I guess you need it for him to go to the ghost land version of it. Like, I suppose, mm-hmm. you know, just so you're not like, okay, we're in Vietnam now. <laughs> like, you wouldn't just be like out of nowhere. You at least know that's what he's thinking about. I wonder if. Because he doesn't time. even write anything ever. He just has his title yeah. and sweats. Well, no, he. he, <laughs> he type, <laughs> we just don't get to see what Does he, he? he's writing about the flash. But I remember every sweats, time we see know. the screen, it just says the title and that's it. But well, I don't know. Right after that. I don't know. I wonder right, if we'll at the rewatch time it. that was assumed that, like, since we were doing the flashbacks, like, this is going to somehow tie into the, I don't know, maybe not. Maybe not. Know. Maybe it'd still be like. It would, still, it would just be weird if they didn't have the flashbacks, and so then you ended up there later to or find two his flashbacks kid in a tiger instead of cage. three or whatever. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. But, uh, but yeah, I completely recommend this movie because it's a fun movie. It's just a fun romp, and it's it's hard to find a good, bad movie. Like, a really good, bad movie. I mean, something that's not like, it's so fucking stupid, you'll laugh, hopefully, if you're <laughs> drunk enough, or, or, like, whatever. This is, like, you can actually have some, uh, you know, there, something to think about, something to laugh about, and uh, just something to watch. It's With legit. the monsters! It's legit enjoyable. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's a good movie. House! 
Uh, we forgot to mention that I was just gonna say there was this. a house, the second story. <laughs> yep. House three is called the horror show because for Not some funny reason. At all. Yeah, for so I don't. I've never it's even like seen shocker, it. It's like shocker, right? The guy gets electrocuted and then comes back and terrorizes these people in a house. And it's I don't know if it was show. was it House Three internationally, but horror show in America, or it was, the other was it supposed to be House Three? And they're like, since it doesn't have the same tone, since it doesn't yeah, have the same, it was same, filmed as House we'll Three. We'll call it horror show. And releases and it has Lance Henriksen as like the dad in the house. I but there is a House Four. Yes, <laughs> and it has the dead hand holding a four <laughs> in a window. And William, what's again, dude? The, a great because isn't William is Cat's it, in it. House two has the dead hand holding a key. Yep. Oh, it's going I in, love you know, those because, fucking covers, man. Yeah. So house four is legit house four, except the tone of it. It's like all serious and glum. It's not funny. William Katz back. It was from like the nineties. Is William Cat back? I think he's playing Roger Cobb. Did you say Katz? <laughs> <Did I? laughs> Sorry. It's, Re- well, it's Re- William Cat apostrophe S. William Katz <laughs> back. And uh yeah, there you go. See? But I think like it was like if my memory of it is that it's really down, dark, downbeat, and dour, Weird. and he's like depressed or whatever. He and lost I'm like, son again, or is he a different character? That's why I wonder if he's a different character with the same name or I think, something. I think they're both on seem, YouTube. Yeah. I think Horror Show and House Four. I are remember on YouTube. hating them both. If that helps, I've never, like, I <laughs> disliked House Two, but I hated. I like as tried. in they were pieces of shit. The horror show <laughs> and House you Four. You spit upon them. You yeah. took them out of the video store you worked in. Like yeah. no one will watch these. Oh, yeah, they were disappointed. Disappointments <laughs> after birth. So next week. Next week. Sean is gonna return from wherever he's off. Finding a fucking himself. guy part timer is what he is. A part timer. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, Sean. You enjoy your summer, motherfucker. Yeah, it might last. <laughs> so he's coming back and he's gonna get us to watch Stuart Gordon's Castle Freak. Which wait, is wait, it based on a ish? It's not a sequel? No. I thought it was the summer of sequels for Sean. I know what's going on with this. Summer's not it's over actually yet. Actually, an HP Lovecraft adaptation perhaps. It might be, is it? I'm like trying to remember. I think was working there fear is a Lovecraft. Yeah. Unnameable, Unnameable is Lovecraft. Is a Lovecraft. I don't Castle think Castle Freak, Freak is a Lovecraft. So. Okay, but it's Stuart Gordon. It's the people who made Reanimator and From Beyond making Castle Freak. Castle Freak. And that's a, next week. Yeah, he's a freak in a castle. That's he what is. He is. That's what I hear. <laughs> All right, on the Saturday Night Freak Show, and until then, friends, the base 